welcome to Coastlands Community Church. We are situated in Tableview, Cape Town, led by Pastors Xavier and Heather Adrianza. We are a church family that is committed to love, accept, and forgive. Our goal is to reach out, allow the Holy Spirit to bring restoration, and release people into their God-given purpose. May God bless you as we worship and hear God's Word together. Good morning. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. You ready to worship God? Guess what? We're getting back to where we need to be. And uh, for those of you that are online this morning, uh, pray that God will meet you at the point of your need and that join us as we come to worship God together and as a family this morning. I'm excited for this next season. Are you excited for this next season that God has for us this morning? So let's stand together and we're going to worship God together. I just want to encourage you today that we we give God the very best that we can as we worship, as we raise our hands and as we honor the Lord this morning. Father, we are so grateful, so, so grateful for your goodness this morning. Thank you that you care for us, you you love us. Thank you that you watch over us, God. Thank you for the many blessings that you pour out upon us. Thank you for your provision, Father God, over our lives today. Thank you for for an amazing privilege that we have as your children this morning to come and worship you. Lord, you, you say in your word that you're seeking those that will worship you in spirit and in truth this morning. That is our heart today, that we would, we would worship you in spirit and in truth this morning. Lord, we we come to you today because we are your people and you you, you say in your word that you want to be our God and you want us to be your people. Lord, thank you this morning, God, that you have an amazing future ahead for us today. Thank you that in the midst of, of every challenge, every circumstance, every situation, what happens in the world, that does not change, God, that you have an amazing plan for us, God. Because your word says, for, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and to give you a future. God, we thank you this morning that, that, that we have this confidence this morning. I come into your presence this morning as we heard last week, Father God, that we come, we, we come to rejoice. We pray without ceasing, God. And, lo- and Lord, we, we, we stand upon your word today. We stand upon, upon, upon what you say to us. We thank you for your presence this morning that is here with us today, Father God. Lord, in everything, in everything, we give thanks this morning. In everything, we give thanks this morning. Come on, church. Would you declare that this morning? In everything, I choose to give thanks this morning. Come on. In everything, in everything, I choose to give thanks this morning. We bless your name. We honor you, Father God. Would you just join me before we even begin to sing to the Lord? Would you begin to just thank God and praise Him this morning? Let's raise up our voices. Come on, let's raise our hands before the Lord this morning. And let's begin to honor Him this morning. We praise you this morning, Father God. We praise you, God. You're a good, good Father. We thank you, Father God. You're a good God towards us, Father God. We praise you today, Father God. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Hallelujah, Lord, we praise you today. Come on, church, let's worship him together. Hallelujah, God. You paid the night. You count the stars and you call them by name. The skies proclaim. God, you reign. Your glory shines. You teach the sun when to bring a new day. Creation sings. God, you reign. Thank God, you reign. God, you reign forever and ever. God, you reign. 
you part the seas you move the mountains with the words that you say my song remains God you reign you hold my life you know my heart and you call me by name I live to sing God you reign and God you
give me wisdom You know just what to do And I will love you, Lord, my strength And I will love you, Lord, my shield And I will love you, Lord, my rock Forever all my days I will Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you.
Cause you are good, good. Oh, cause you are good, good. sing that again. You're never going to let us down. You are good. You are good, God. You're good, God. Come on, let's declare that this morning. You're good, God. Because you are good. Good. Because you are good. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, God. You never let us down, God. Thank you, Lord, that this, we have confidence in you, God, that you, you're true to your word. You never let us down. Lord, we thank you this morning that we, we can come before you today and present every need before you this morning. God, every need in our lives for those, Lord, that that uh, still navigating through sickness this morning. We thank you today that you're a miracle-working God this morning. Father, you're a miracle-working God. And in the name of Jesus this morning, we speak the healing power of God over everybody that is, that is afflicted in some way this morning. We speak the healing power of God 
We thank you this morning that we have the authority and power in the name of Jesus. This morning, we rebuke sickness this morning in the name of Jesus. We come against that spirit of infirmity this morning in the name of Jesus. And we serve it notice this morning in the name of Jesus in lives today, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your people today, God, that we would in this hour, as you spoke to us last week, that we would stand firm upon your word and trust you God stand upon your word because you are the God that forgives all our, 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 our sins and you, and you heal all our diseases God we thank you this morning that we have this, this confidence in you this morning Lord concerning people's well being thank you this morning God that no weapon no weapon formed against God's people will prosper in the name of Jesus this morning. Every tongue that is raised will be condemned in the name of Jesus because we have authority and power in the name of Jesus this morning. Father, we pray today, Lord, even for those that would navigate financial difficulty, even in these times right now, we pray for a breakthrough over their lives this morning. We pray for, for jobs in the name of Jesus. Open doors in the name of Jesus this morning. Father, we believe you today for a miracle. Lord, for those right now where the enemy has attacked the mind, where the enemy has attacked the mind, thank you this morning for a renewed mind in the name of Jesus this morning. Thank you for a mind that focuses on the Word of God and will begin to and will be, be able to confront the lies of the enemy. This morning, in the name of Jesus, we confront every lie of the enemy. We come against depression. We come against uh, the attack on the mind in the name of Jesus this morning. We serve notice on the enemy this morning in the name of Jesus today. Father God, I thank you today. I thank you for a hedge of protection even in this place this morning. I pray for a hedge. I thank you for a covering. I thank you that you give your angels charge over us this morning. Thank you for a, 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 a banner over this place, a banner of protection this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord. Father, we're so grateful. God, you never let us down, God. God, you'll do it again. You'll do it over and you'll do it again. We're so thankful, Father God. We're so thankful this morning. This is just want to encourage you this morning as I, as I was praying early this morning, the Lord just started to in, encourage my heart and I need to encourage you this morning that we need to confront the lies of the enemy with the word of God. You need to begin to confront. There are things, there are things that, that, that are standing in your way and we need to begin to confront because the enemy is not interested in our opinion. When he came to Jesus, Jesus said to him, Satan, it is written. And we have to begin to remind the enemy, Satan, it is written in the word of God. There's someone here this morning concerning your children. Don't accept the lie of the enemy this morning. But begin to speak the fact that Jesus has become a lamb for a household. Jesus became a lamb for a household. Jesus became a lamb. God, God, uh, the, the, the word of God is there to begin to impact our children, our, our generation, our family this morning. Father, come on, let's come into agreement this morning. Those of you that are trusting God for your children this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus this morning, we pray for a breakthrough in the hearts of our children, in the break, the breakthrough in the hearts of our family this morning. In the name of Jesus, we ask you today that the love of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ will penetrate their hearts this morning and bring about a shift in their hearts and bring about a change in their hearts. We pray and ask you. We ask you today, God, that children and, and family members will have a God encounter, Lord, that they'll have God moments. We ask you in the name of Jesus this morning. We, we come against that assignment of the enemy to lie, to, to, to bring deception in the name of Jesus this morning. And we free people from the lie of the enemy. We say, we say the word of God is truth and we confront those lies with the truth of God this morning. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready for a season of miracles? 
Are you ready for a season where God comes and visit? When God does some amazing things in our lives, there, there's some of you that are believing God for, for things in your life right now. I want to encourage you, don't settle for, for second best. Don't, don't buy into the lie of the enemy, but begin to stand firm on the Word of God because we're coming into a season where God will visit your situation miraculously in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, even as we come to your word this morning, Lord, help us to have open hearts. Help us to hear what the Spirit of God has to say to us in these moments. In this time, this strategic time right now, help us to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us right now. Help us to embrace what the Holy Spirit is saying to us in these times, Lord. Lord, help us to begin to recognize that you're speaking specifically, you're speaking prophetically to us. I th this morning, I thank you that every time the Word of God is spoken, there is a prophetic intent of the Holy Spirit upon our individual lives. And this morning, help us not to, not to, not to receive the word uh, uh, just in terms of the broader church, but this morning, help us to receive the word for ourselves this morning, that we would allow your spirit to bring about the transformation and the change that you so, so much desire. Lord, help us to allow the Holy Spirit this morning to ignite something in us today in the name of Jesus. Help us Holy Spirit to begin to do something in our hearts today that will begin to catapult us for this next season. Help us this morning to allow the Holy Spirit to, 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 to ignite something in us, God, concerning our future, concerning this next season, concerning the, miracle, the miraculous power of God that you want to begin to release in the earth today, Father. Thank you that you're doing, God, you're doing a new thing today. Thank you that beyond this time that we've had to endure, God, you're desiring to do something new in each one of us. You're desiring to do something new, something new in the earth today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah, God. Help us to have open hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, come this morning. Come speak, speak the word, speak the word, speak the word. Let it, let it penetrate our hearts this morning. Oh, we're so dependent. We need, your, we need a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit on our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us, God. We need a fresh anointing as the Word is spoken, God, that it will begin to penetrate our hearts. Lord, I pray this morning that it's not just another word or another good word or another, but this morning I ask you today, when we leave this place, let us shift today. Let something, let something be deposited in our hearts that brings about a shift, that, that radically moves us closer to where you want us to be, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a seat. Thank you so much, Nick and the team, for leading us this morning. Good morning. Good morning for those that are online and take your Bible and say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. It is God speaking to me. I can do what it says I can do. I can be what it says I can be. And I can have what it says I can have. Amen. Amen. Well, we are on a journey. Are you on a journey this morning? I'm on a journey. I don't know about you, but I'm on a journey. Are you on a journey this morning? Come on. You can't stand still. You have to be on a journey. God is doing some things in, our, uh, in and around us. And, um, and uh, as, as I mentioned, that, uh, that God is... Uh, God is reset. The word, the word for us right now is reset. Uh, another word that's, that, uh, that, 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 that also speaks into that, that God's been giving me is the word reposition, that the Lord, that this is a season where God is about to bring change and he's refining 
and um, we have to begin to recognize that the Lord is about to, to reposition us uh, by the Holy Spirit, and uh, we need to recognize the times that we live in, and um, most important that we, we come to understand that God wants to do something in His church. You and I are the church. We are the church, and God wants to do something in our lives. And um, as I've been saying, I believe that there's a fresh perspective that the Lord wants to bring, a new mindset, a repositioning of ourselves for this next season. And as I mentioned last week, we must, we must understand that there's seasons and there's times. And when you have to recognize that this is a specific time that God is speaking to us, and, and when God speaks to us in a specific time, He's preparing us for a season, for this next season that God has. How, how many of you this morning sense that God is about to do something? Come on. You, I, I have the sense that God is about to do something. You know, you know, you know, you know what they say? There's a rumble in the jungle. Right? God is about to do something. Come on. I want you to get excited. God is about to do something. Right? There's been, there's been, a, serious, uh, there's been a season of a lull. Right? Of a lull, and we've been in this season, but God is about to do something. And uh, you've got to recognize the times, even though we, we know that the Apostle Paul wrote to us, and he said to us that these, are difficult, this, these will be difficult times, these will be perilous times, these will be times of great danger, great risk, uncertainty. Uh, we have to be careful how we navigate. But I tell you something, God is, going to, God is going to empower His church to navigate through these difficult seasons. It's going, to be a, it's going to be a time of us witnessing the miraculous power of God as God begins to allow us to navigate through. We're not going to go around. We're going to go through this season, but God is going to empower us to go through this. And I'm, 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 I'm excited about it because um, God is preparing His church. You and I are the church, and we need to allow God to... To, to do what he needs to do in us. He's calling you and I to be the church, to be a difference in, in the world we're facing. And um, we know that the world is facing a crisis, but God is preparing his people. And um, I mentioned to you uh, uh, two weeks ago, and I want to remind you again, that Revelation chapter 19 and verse 7 says, as, as it speaks about the time when we come together as, at the marriage of the Lamb, but there's a statement that is made, and the Bible says that the bride has made herself ready. There's a preparation process that we are going through right now. Whatever you're going through right now, God is preparing you. God is preparing His bride for a time when we stand before Him. But God is also preparing His bride for this next season that He takes us to. And I made a statement. I said, our choices in, the, in these times will define our preparation. How you respond to what God is saying right now will prepare you for what God has in the future. And it's time, more than ever, it is time that we focus on doing the will of our Father, doing the will of God. We must be focused on doing the will of God. I want to start off my message this morning. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 6 and says, Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Let's get that. Those who say, so if you're saying this morning that you live, you live in God, or if you're saying, as another translation will put it, those who say they've accepted Him as Lord and Savior, those that are living, if, you, if you're living in God, then you have to accept Him not only as your Savior, but you have to accept Him as your Lord. Okay? Because it's easy when it's salvation. Most people, when you talk about salvation, they think about heaven. When you talk about lordship, then we're talking about what we spoke about last week, that we can rule and reign in this life. Right? 
It's not just about heaven, it's about now. And um, the scripture says, those who say they live in God. In other words, those that have made Jesus not only their Savior, but their Lord. Not only accepted His forgiveness, but they're willing to submit to, to the will and the purpose of God. It says, th- those, are, those people that say that, they need to back, in other words, the scripture says, they need to back this up by the way they live. In other words, we have to live the way Jesus did. And so if, you, if you're going to live like Jesus did, would you agree with me? We've got to go and find out how Jesus lived. If we're going to live, and in this hour, there's a call, there's a fresh call. And, and another translation puts, puts it this way, that those who say they've accepted Him as Lord and Savior, they have an obligation to walk and conduct themselves the way he walked and the way he conducted them himself. We have an obligation. And so I come to you this morning saying to you that reset or reposition is a fresh call of the Spirit to readjust our conduct and readjust our walk with Jesus. To study the walk of Jesus and to bring our lives closer to the way that Jesus walked. And I want to share a principle with you this morning that, uh, that uh, will, be, will be the core of our message this morning. And it's this, how you see yourself determines how you respond to God's purpose for your life and how you will relate to those who God places in your path. I want you to get it this morning. How you see yourself determines how you respond to God's purpose for your life and how you relate to those who God places in your path, how you see yourself. You've got, you, Jesus saw himself in a specific way. Jesus saw himself in a specific way. And you'll watch in Scripture, if we're going to live the way Jesus lived, then we have to come to, to recognize that at different points in Scripture, Jesus saw himself in a certain way. It's so important how you see yourself. Let me give you an example just to, just to, to, to solidify the principle. But let me give you the principle again. How you see yourself determines how you respond to God's purpose for your life and how you relate to those who God places in your path. So it affects how you see yourself, affects how you walk out God's purpose, and it will also affect how you relate to those that God brings, you, brings across your path. How many of you know that God brings people across our paths regularly? From all walks of life, God brings people, whether it's in a mall or whatever, but how you see yourself will determine how you relate to those people. How you see yourself you will determine how you begin to uh, respond to God's purpose for your life. And uh, uh, let me give you a, an example. In, 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 in the book of Samuel, uh, the Lord gives Samuel the prophet an instruction to go in because Saul had disobeyed uh, God. God said, I'm, Samuel, I want you to go and anoint the next king. And so he goes, and God says, you go to the house of Jesse. And he goes to the house of Jesse, and I don't have time to go through it, but Samuel, in his mind, first of all, he thinks elders, and then he recognizes, God says, it's not the elders, and then he thinks strong and big, and God says, no, it's not strong and big. And finally, they get down to to the fact where he says to Jesse, he says, is there another one in this house? And then Jesse says, yes, there's a boy out looking after the sheep, and they bring David, and so Samuel anoints David. And... um, Everyone knew what that anointing meant. Everyone. Let me, let me just read. It's not on the screen, but let me just read First Samuel 16, verse 13. It says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So something happened in that place. But I want you to understand this, that this happened before David confronted Goliath. So David, so, so God allows Samuel to anoint David. But when David goes into the field, 
He doesn't go into the field as a swollen head. He goes into the field based on his father's instruction and as a servant going to serve his brothers. And how you see yourself will, will determine how you deal with God's process in your life and how you begin to relate to others. Are you getting me this morning? So he doesn't go there, he doesn't go into this, he doesn't go to, to his brothers as, as saying, well, you know, I am the future king. He, he goes there on the instruction of his father, and, and he goes with the heart of a servant to serve his brother. He's taking supplies to his brother. How many of you know when your heart is right, God is about to do something? Get me this morning. When your heart is right, God is about to do something. And when he gets there, all of a sudden, he recognizes, but there's a giant. And then God starts to do something in his heart. But you must understand something that God is dealing not with a future king. God's dealing with the heart of a servant. And he says, my boy, you can take this guy. Right? And you also see, you see the heart of humility with David because Saul pulls him in and he says, hey, you know, if you're going to take this guy on, here's my armor. David says, no, you know what? I'm going to use the stuff that God gave me when no one was looking. Okay? You see how, are you getting me this morning? How you see yourself determines how you respond to God's purpose and how you will relate to those who God places in your path. You get the example? Come on, are you with me this morning? There's another example in 2 Kings chapter 5. And the Bible says that Naaman was the commander of the Syrian army. The Bible says he was a powerful man. But the Bible says he was also a leper. And so Syria invades Israel and they capture a young girl and they bring her as a slave into Naaman's house to serve Naaman's wife. Now understand that this girl, she's a young girl. The Bible says she was a young girl. So obviously she's come into a very difficult threatening place. And she's regarded as a slave. But it doesn't stop there. Because that girl recognized herself as a servant of the Lord. In the midst of a different nation, she recognizes that she's there completely different. They may see her as a slave, but she's there as a servant of the Most High God. And one day, she says to her mistress, she says, if only my master were with a prophet in Samaria, he would heal him of his leprosy. And she begins to preach the power of God in the midst of that home. Why? Because she begins to recognize who she is. She begins to recognize that they may see me as a slave, but I'm a messenger from the Lord. So this morning, how do you see yourself? Because how you see yourself will determine how you respond to the call of God, the purpose of God, and how you begin to relate to others that come across your path. She could have just, would you agree with me, that in most cases, people would think, well, it's probably just better if I just lie low and say nothing. Later on, later on we have to see the heart too. Naaman, Naaman goes. Naaman goes to the prophet. But he almost misses his miracle. And you know why? Because it's how he sees himself. He sees himself as the head. He sees himself as the head, the commander of, of, the, of the, the Syrian army. And he almost misses his moment. Because when he gets to Elisha, 
and he gets to Elisha's house. His expectation is as the, the head of the Syrian army that if Elisha's going to come out and Elisha's going to bow down to him. And Elisha says to, says to his servant, he says, go tell that man to go and wash himself seven times in the Jordan. And let me tell you, the Bible says that Naaman was furious. He says, who does this man think he is? Why can't he come out and stretch his hand over me and I will be healed? And his servant says to him, hey, Naaman, listen, for goodness sake, this has got to do with your life. Just go do what the prophet tells you to do. And when he finally goes and does what the prophet, he comes back to the prophet. He says, now, that, now I know that the God of Israel is the one and only true God. But the principle is this. How you see yourself determines how you respond to the purpose of God in your life and how you begin to relate to people when you begin to see yourself. You, may be, you can be a nobody, and you can walk into a place, but how you see yourself places you in a position that when you open your mouth, you begin to speak with a level of authority, and people begin to listen because they come to understand this is no ordinary person. I may not know his name, but this is no ordinary person. Come on, you can go in for an interview, and if you know who you are, it becomes a completely different interview because you know. Are you getting, are you getting the principle this morning, right? Now I, want to take us, now I want to take us this morning to um, the Apostle Paul brings three things. And so this morning my message is reset. It's number one, is servant, steward, and son. When I speak about son, I'm not referring to a gender, because God, when God speaks to us, he says we are all sons of God, okay? Right? It's got nothing to do with gender. It's just the way he refers to us. If, you, if, if you'd like me to say that this morning, then you're a son or you're a daughter of God, okay? But the message this morning is servant, steward, son or daughter of God. And Paul writes to us, in 1 Corinthians, and the principle is how you see yourself determines how you respond to God's purpose for your life and how you relate to those who play God places in your path. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, and Paul says, Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ, stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. Romans chapter 8 verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And so God, how you see yourself, I want you to understand that there's a repositioning that God wants to bring in our hearts, reaffirming the fact that number one, we are servants of Christ, number two, we are stewards of the mysteries of God, and number three, we are sons of sons and daughters of God if we are led by the Spirit of God, okay? I know we become sons and daughters of God when we, when we get born again, but with the Bible there is speaking about a person that has come to maturity, but we'll talk about that in a couple of moments. And so my message this morning is that God wants to reposition us and he wants to change our perspective. He wants to change something in our hearts today that when we leave this place, that we begin to act differently as servants. We begin to act differently as stewards and we begin to act differently as sons and daughters of God. So, so don't, 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 don't sit there this morning and say, I am a servant, or I am a steward, or I'm, I'm asking you this morning to have an open heart that God wants to bring a level of shift and change something in our hearts. Because you see, first of all, the Apostle Paul says, we're firstly servants of Christ. And that word servant is the word doulos. And, and the word doulos means, uh, it speaks about someone that binds themselves 
to, to, to someone else. In other words, when, when, when you recognize that someone is a master, if, if, you, if you want to understand biblical servanthood, then you begin to bind yourself to the master. Now, you know what? We have a problem. We have a big issue right now in the world because we don't have, we don't have a biblical understanding of servanthood I mean, you, you, see, you see the challenges that we have today with children and parents because we don't have the right understanding of it, right? And, 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 and we, 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 we must because when today, today, whenever you think about servant, right, you know what comes up first? My rights. Have you noticed that? So whenever you think about a servant, they say, what about my rights? Right? When, we, when you think about a servant in terms of God's servant, you've got to think about binding yourself to God. And beginning, when you bind yourself to God, you've got to begin to see that I'm binding myself to my master. And because I bind myself to my master, then whatever my master wants me to do, that is what I'm going to do. Where my master wants me to go, that's where, I want, that's where I'm going to go. Whatever he's asking me to do today, I'm going to do that. When we think about, about a servant, it refers to one who is willing, willingly offers one obedience, devotion, loyalty, and submits to the will of his master. Now I've come to realize something. Loyalty is a crazy thing in our world. You know, you know what? You, you, have you noticed that, that, that we have the world system and we have the kingdom of God? Let me say to you this morning that, that so much of the world has been, has, has been pushed into the kingdom of God. And we function from a world system rather than a God system. And some of us want God's benefits, but we want to function the way the world functions. Because when you think about a simple thing like loyalty, today loyalty is based on someone's need for you. How many of you own a business and you had someone working and you thought they were loyal? They were only loyal until they never, need, until they never needed you. While they needed you, they were loyal. How many of you know it is not supposed to be like that in the kingdom of God? Come on, are you with? Uh, you're, not, you're, you're not nodding this morning, so I'm worried. Are you saying, oh me, or amen? Right? You see, loyal, so, so when we think about servant, we think about obedience, devotion, we think about loyalty, we think about submitting to the will of my master. And today we don't understand servanthood because, like I said, it's more about my rights as a, as a servant, not, not about me submitting to the Lord. And Jesus gives us a snapshot of servanthood in Matthew chapter 20, verse 26 to 28. And when, he, when he's speaking to the disciples and, and he's having a conversation with them, he says, yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to, be gr- to become great among you, let him be your servant. So if, if you, if you want to achieve something in the kingdom of God, it comes through serving. Right? He says, and whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. And then he says, guys, this is the benchmark. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Right? And when you think about Jesus, right? Um, he knew, how many of you know, that he knew he was the Son of God. Right? right? And yet the Bible says that Jesus, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and yet it comes, and to give his life as a ransom for many. You want to understand servanthood? Then servanthood is laying your life down. If you want to be a servant, then you're going to have to become a bridge builder. How many of you know to be a bridge, you've got to lay down your life so that relationships can be established, right? When, when, I, when, when Heather and I moved into this community years ago, and... Um, uh, the first, first four or five years were very interesting years for us. Uh, 
because when we walked, when we walked around, we wanted to get to know everybody, and nobody wanted to get to know us. Actually, I had a conversation with the Lord one day, and I said to the Lord, I said, Your Father, we're just trying to make connection, and it just seems like nobody wants to connect with us. And the Lord said to me, uh, I called you to be a bridge builder. And the minute I understood that I'm a bridge builder, I realized something that my life is going to have to become as I'm going to have to lay down my life so that people can begin to cross over. How many of you know it's not about Xavier, it's about Jesus, right? And you become a bridge builder. And people, your life becomes a, a passage for people to begin to walk over and connect to Jesus. And, and, and the, the sooner I got that, I stopped complaining. But you know, God, God also said to me, he said something funny to him and I, one day we were walking in the bayside. And we were, you know, everybody was, we were trying to, hi, how are you? Nobody was, hi, how are you, whatever. And the only person that they were happy to play with was Jamie because she was cute. Right? And everybody wanted to play with Jamie. And, and, um, and uh, in one of my complaints with the Lord, the Lord said to me, but Xavier, the day will come, the day will come when you won't know who they are, but they will know who you are. And you know where that comes from? It comes from the fact when you understand who you are. And today, I'm embarrassed to say this, that I walk in the shopping center and people say, Hi, Pastor Xavier. And I'm the one that's saying to you, Babe, who's that? <laughs> who is that? Yesterday, yesterday, someone gave Heather and I the greatest smile in checkers. So good to see you guys again. And as we walked away, Heather said, Babe, who's that? And I said, babe, I don't have a clue. <laughs> I don't have a clue, right? See, see um, uh, and, 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 and you see, if you're going to serve God, you're going to have to lay your life down. And you're going to have to serve, and there's things that we get to do that doesn't make sense in the moment, right? But how many of you know we're dealing with kingdom stuff here? If, you, if, you, if you're looking for, a, for an outcome this week and next week, I got news for you. It's not going to happen. Because what you're doing when you lay your life down is so that other people will come to know Jesus and, and, and lives, lives get touched. And Jesus says, Jesus says this to us. He says, if you're going to become a servant, you have to go, you're going to have to come to a point where you're willing to lay your life down. Now, this doesn't happen with the world's definition of servanthood, Right? And often it goes beyond words, it goes, it's actions. Every day we're given God opportunities to serve others and it opens up the doors for us to present Christ, but it starts with a servant heart. It's a, and, and a servant heart is this, it means that we have a mindset or a desire to selfless, selflessly and sa sacrificially lay down our lives to serve others regardless of our feelings towards them or what it may cost. How many of you know that it's easy to lay down your life for the nice people? Huh? Some of you, it's easy to do it for your family. Can I say to you this morning that God's asking you to do it for anybody? Because James chapter 2 verse 9 says, impartiality is sin. It's sin. If you're just willing to do for you and your own, it's sin. Because there's other people that God wants us to lay our lives down for. My, my dad taught, I, I have to watch time this morning. My dad taught me a, a lesson, many lessons. But one day I came home and, I, and uh, he said, what, have you, what were you up to today? And um, I, uh, I said, Dad, I was with Malcolm. And uh, so he said, what did you guys do? And I said, well, we landed up cleaning uh, their backyard. My dad said, oh, that's good. I'm glad you helped them. But my boy, charity begins at home. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Charity begins at home. The way we, we, we need to learn to serve, yeah. You need to learn to serve your family, yeah. You know, you, you know we, we, we have to begin to, uh, I'm going to come to Sonship, hopefully get, come to Sonship this morning about how we get led by the Spirit. But sometimes, sometimes I, I, get, I, get, I get the peop, 
people will say to me along the journey, they say, you know what, um, when we came to you, the church that Sunday morning, there was a lady that greeted me at the door. And that changed everything for me. They don't say, the message you preach that Sunday morning <laughs> changed everything for me. But they say, there was, a lady, there was a lady at the door. And the way they treated me changed everything for me. I, I, I'm not bent out of shape that the message didn't do that. I'm grateful that someone stepped up and recognized that they're a servant of the Lord and they treated someone well and they became a bridge for someone to cross over to Jesus. See, we limit ourselves. Come on. Those that serve us coffee, I want you to serve us with a different, different vibe this morning because let me tell you something. You're not doing it for us. There's something that happens in the background when we choose to serve God, and we choose to, to, someone walks in here, and you give them a cup of coffee, and you never know that that is the cup of coffee that begins to bring them closer in, and begins to open their hearts, and they come again, and God does something amazing. But without that experience, they, would, they may have never come back here again. Are you with me this morning? Amen. Say to someone next to you, charity begins at home. You know, do you know what the world says? you know what the world says? They say that most of the work gets by, done by how many percent of the people? 20% of the people. They say organizations thrive because of the efforts of 20% of the people. And 80% of the people are just kind of there. Come on. Are we the world in this place? I'm asking you this morning, are we the world? Do we function on 20%? No. Let me, let, me, let me give you the scripture. The Bible says this. It says, he makes the whole body, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 16, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts to grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. You've got, you got a part to play. There's a, place, there's a place for you to serve. How you see yourself determines how you respond to God's purpose for your life and how you relate to those who God places in your path. Now, uh, in Acts chapter 16, verse 16 to 17, I have the scripture on the screen. It says, one day as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl with a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. This is a, this is, this is a slave girl that, that's, that, 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 that's got a foreign spirit in her, right? And she, it said she, le- she earned a lot of money from, for her masters by telling fortunes, okay? Fortune tellers are not prophets. So don't go to a fortune teller. They're not a prophet. They lead you down the wrong road. She said she followed Paul and the rest of them shouting this. What did she say? These men are servants of the Most High God. Listen to what she says. And they have come to tell us how to be saved. An unsaved person recognized servants of the Lord. And I tell you something, we are servants of the Lord. And we have come to tell people how to be saved. Our mission is to tell people how to be saved. How you see yourself determines how you respond to God's purpose for your life and how you begin to relate to other people. Secondly, Paul says we are stewards. You're not only a servant, but you're a steward. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 says, As each one has received a gift. Every single person in this place this morning, you have a gift, you have more than one gift, You have gifts in your life. The scripture says, as each one has received a gift, what are we supposed to do? We are to minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. God has placed a gift in your life. Your, your, Your purpose in life is to minister. As a good steward, is to minister it to one another. Find the people that God wants you to invest your gift in and invest your gift. 
in, in those people as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. In other words, when you begin to, when you begin to function in your gift, there's a grace that comes upon your life. There's an empowering that comes upon your life when you begin to, extend, when you begin to step into the gift that God and become a steward. And each one of us are stewards of the gifts God has given us. Listen to me. When you ignore or neglect your gift, then others do not experience the benefit and they suffer loss. They miss out on what God has intended for their lives when we don't, when we ignore our gift and when we neglect our gift. If you ignore your gift, you neglect your gift, then others don't experience the benefit. They suffer loss. They miss out on what God intended them to receive. See, a steward oversees something that belongs to another person. Have you noticed what the scripture says? It is the gifts of the spirit. Right? It is the gifts, God, it is the gifts of the spirit. In other words, the gifts belong to the spirit. They function under the, the direction of the, of the Spirit. They function under the authority of the Spirit. They're the gifts of the Spirit. A steward is someone who, who, who oversees something that belongs to another person. Secondly, a steward carries authority to manage what has been entrusted to him. When God gives you a gift, he gives you the authority to function with that gift. Thirdly, every steward will give an account of what God has invested or, or allowed them to use. Every steward will give them account. You see, when, when we begin to function in those gifts, then we begin to influence other people's lives. We begin to affect everybody, everybody's life. In Acts chapter 10, an interesting account in Acts chapter 10, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to spot read as I, just so that you, you have a, a picture of, of what happens. But it says in Acts chapter 10, in Caesarea, there lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius, who was captain of the Italian regiment. So, so Cornelius, Cornelius is, uh, is the highest rank in, in, in the Italian regiment. It, but it says he was a devout, he was a devout, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. He, he gave generously to the poor and prayed regularly. And one afternoon, about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming toward him, saying, "Cornelius." And Cornelius stared at him in terror. "What does it say?" asked the angel. And the angel replied. He said, your gifts, your prayers and your gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. He says, now send some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He's staying with Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. And now if you, if you track the story, you'll find that at the same time, God, God's, God goes to Peter and God speaks to Peter and he says, there's some men coming here. Right? And God connects, and, and what happens, I don't have time to go through it, but I, what, I want, what I want you to see this morning is this thing about the gift. When Peter begins to function in his gift, he begins to go to Cornelius' house, and he begins to minister to Cornelius' family and the people that are around him. And God does an amazing work when Peter begins to recognize that he has a gift from God, and, and he begins to connect, because how you see yourself, as a steward, will depend how you begin to respond to the purpose of God and to the people that God brings into your life. You see, so, you, you, you know, something that, that, that happened to Peter is that God had to confront Peter before he could get there. And because Peter, when Peter's mindset was this, that anybody other than a Jew was unclean. And so God first deals with Peter's heart. And when Peter allows God to deal with his heart, then he can begin to cross over, right, and go and minister to Cornelius because Cornelius is a Gentile. How many of you know that God needs to do something in some of our hearts so that we can begin to cross over, so that God can begin to use it? You know, uh, this whole idea of being a steward of, of, um, of, of of, of the manifold grace of God on my daily walk, and I want to use it as an example, a practical example to you. 
on my daily walk every morning, I, uh, I, I try to walk about eight k's every morning. And, and a part of my walk is a, a, a prayer time, and I'm talking to the Lord, and I'm asking God, uh, Lord, what is it that you have for me today? What is, what is part of my assignment that you have besides ministry? What is, your, what is um, the assignment? And it's amazing what God does when we come to the Lord that way. And we become, we say we want to be a good steward of our time. Let me give you two examples of that. Um, I, was, uh, I was walking and the Lord said to me, um, he said, phone your insurance broker. And um, I phoned the insurance broker and I was, I was chatting, chatting to him and said, hi, how are you doing? And um, his initial response was, no, everything's okay. I said, are you sure you're okay? And then he said, no, it's not okay. Right? And he started pouring his heart out for, for, about his family and the situation in his, with his children and stuff like that. And um, at the end of our conversation, he says this to me. He says, so what do you need? Because he's my insurance broker. I said, I don't need anything. He says, but you phoned me. I said, I phoned you because... God told me to phone you. And he's completely bowled away because his client phones him and not for to get help, but because when you understand your assignment, are you getting it this morning? That you've got to get to know who you are. I'm a man on a mission. I'm telling you. I want, I want our people to get it. These are amazing times that God has for us. This week, I was walking, and God placed a pastor on my, on my heart. And I phoned the pastor. I said, how are you doing? He said, I'm okay. I said, are you sure you're okay? He says, when can you have coffee? I said, we can have coffee tomorrow morning. Right? At the end of our conversation, he said to me, what made you phone me? He says, this is what I've needed for months. What made you phone me? I said, it's when we understand our assignment. We servants of God, we stewards. You have to become a steward of the gift. As each one has been given a gift, you have a gift. You have, I'm not, this is not about me. You have, been, you have been given a gift. God says in his word, he, say, he says, each one has been given a gift. He says, now find the spot to minister to one another as good stewards. Someone that has been entrusted can I say, remind you this morning, a steward oversees something that belongs to someone else. A steward carries authority. I, you and I, when God gives you a gift, he gives you authority. When you begin to respond, when you be, begin to respond to that situation, let me tell you something. You step in there. You step in with authority. There's something that begins to happen when you begin to open your mouth because you've stepped. You've, you've stepped. You, you, you've become a steward of the manifold grace of God. You've taken the gift. And when you step in there, let me tell you something. You begin to say things that that you never planned on saying. You begin to do some things that you never planned on doing. You know why? Because you're empowered by God. There's, a, there's an authority that you carry when, you, when, you, when you're doing that. How you see yourself. Come on, this morning, yes, people here today, you have the gift of hospitality. And God is saying, come on, use that gift. In these, in these times, there's some of you that, that, that you just, there, there's a kindness about you that God has, that, that goes beyond what other people can do, and God wants to use, use you. There's some of you that have a gift of intercession that needs to step up because of your gift. There's some of you that have a word of knowledge. There's some of you that have a gift of exhortation. There's some of you that have the ability to serve at another level. There's some of you that, that are able to take some 
some things in our church right now and take it to the next level. Can I ask you a question this morning? Do you think that God has me here to do everything? Right? I'm going to be the first to tell you that I can't do everything. There's some things that there's other people that can do a far better job than me. And you know what? God wants to do something in this next season. I am challenging us today, right? How you see yourself determines how you will respond to God's purpose for your life and how you'll begin to relate to to those who God brings across your path. Finally, I'm going to touch on this this morning, but this is a message that that, uh, in its own. But the Bible says, for as many, in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. More than ever, it's time for us to grow up and be led by the Spirit of God, be true sons and daughters of God. The, 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 um, that word son that is used in that scripture, uh, uh, by the way, in, in the Bible, there's, there's a term that is used for toddler, there's a, there's a term that is used for young man, there's a ter- term that is used for teenagers, spiritually, and then you come to this scripture, and it's the word huyas, and it speaks about a mature child of God. And so it says, for as many are the, are, are led, that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the mature sons of God. And... and Jesus said this, I touched on this a couple of weeks ago. Jesus said, if you will obey me, you are truly my disciples. Do you remember that, right? And true sons obey. True sons carry a grace and a peace. True sons carry a blessing on their lives. True sons have an understanding of the inheritance from their father. You know, my dad could not leave any material or financial inheritance to me. Did not leave me any material or financial inheritance. But you know what Proverbs chapter 13 verse 22 says? It says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. The greatest inheritance that you can leave for your family is a spiritual inheritance. Where I come from, there was a family that was the wealthiest family in that community. They're scraping the bottom of the barrel today. And you know why? Because the next, the, the next generation squandered every cent. But you cannot kill off a spiritual inheritance. I leave a spiritual inheritance to my children's children. Hunter's beginning to grab hold of that spiritual inheritance. And he'll be able to pass that spiritual inheritance. Because true sons, number one is a true son obeys his father. See, you see in the world today, this is a challenge. But when we talk about the kingdom this morning, then true sons obey their father. True sons of God carry a grace. There's a grace. There's a blessing. There's a peace. You ever had someone, you walk into a place and someone says, what is it about you? Not much seems to bother you. You know what it is? It's a peace. It's a peace that goes beyond understanding. This is, this is when we come into true sonship. There's, a, there's an understanding that we have inheritance. Can I, can I say to you this morning that true sons honor their father? True sons honor their father. If we're going to be sons of God, we have to honor our father. And maybe we have to learn what that means to honor our father. They carry the values of their father. They're led by the Spirit. Whatever he tells them to do, they do. It's a place of maturity. Son, son, true sons of God carry the mandate of Jesus in their hearts. True sons of God are full of Jesus. They're not full of themselves. 
To be a mature son of God, you have to begin to, if you, if you want to get to this place of sonship, you have to get to that place where you're willing to embrace your role as a servant, where, you, where you're willing to embrace, to, where you're willing to become a faithful steward, and when we be led by the Spirit and we're not led by the flesh. How many of you know this? That if you're not led by the Spirit, you're led by the flesh. There's no middle ground. There's no middle ground. If you're not led by the Spirit, you're led by the flesh. Now, how do we do this? And I know, I know um, around the sonship issue, I'm, I, I want to revisit that. I think it's a, it's a word that God wants to bring to us. But how do we do this? And the Lord gave me a scripture this morning that I want to bring this home with. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. It says, sow, sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap in mercy. There's a phrase there. It says, break up your fallow ground. Let me just quickly explain to you what that means. There's a season when, um, when farmland is left for a season. And the reason for that is so that the fertility of the soil can be restored. So farmland gets left for a season so that the fertility of the soil can be restored. And the Lord said this to me. He said this last season, this last 18 months, has been a season. But what happens? At a point the farmer begins to realize that it's time to revisit that land. And the term is used that they begin to break up. The fallow ground is the land that has been lying there for a while. And the Lord said to me, in our hearts, it's time to break up the fallow ground. The areas that have been lying dormant, it's time to begin to break up. Allow the, allow the Holy Spirit to begin to break up the fallow ground and begin to shake up. It's time for the Holy Spirit to begin to break up the fallow ground. And I started off my message this morning saying that we're coming into a, a very exciting time, miraculous time. But it's ta- this is what the Lord says, and I close with this this morning. It's time to break up the fallow ground. Because the Holy Spirit wants to rain down on his church. The Holy Spirit wants to rain down, and not just yeah, on your life. The Holy Spirit wants to begin to rain down on your life. Rain a downpour. A downpour. I was, I was, I was, out of, out of, I was not in Cape Town two weekends ago, and my wife said to me, we had a massive downpour. Right? The Holy Spirit wants to, to, to pour on us. But we have to begin to allow the Spirit to begin to break the fallow ground. And this morning, bow your heads, close your eyes. Nick, Nick would you come this morning? And I, I want to remind you um, of, of, of the principle, how you see yourself today determines how you respond to God's purpose to, for your life and how you relate to those who God places in your path. And so this morning, um, as Nick comes, would you bow your head and close your eyes? So, how do you see yourself? How do you see yourself as a servant? How do you rate yourself as a servant this morning? Because God wants to break the fallow ground. I know know in my life, uh, God can still do better. God can still do better. I want to wake up every morning and to be able to say, yes, sir. I'm a servant of the Most High God. Whatever, Lord. How do you rate yourself as a steward this morning? What God has placed in your, in your, in your life. The gifts, the abilities, the blessings that God has placed in your life. How do you, how do you rate your 
your stewardship this morning. There's a parable that we, we know about the master that divided to his, serv- his servants and then the Bible says that at the point he came. And so if me ask you if Jesus were to come today, how would you find yourself with what God's placed in your life? And I know I can do better. And so Holy Spirit, come and break the break the fallow ground. Begin to dig in, the, in those areas that are dormant. And as a son, where do we rate our obedience, our loyalty? How do we evaluate how, how well are we being led by the Spirit? How often is it the flesh that comes forward and not the Spirit? The opportunity this morning that the Holy Spirit just wants to break, break the fallow ground. But we know this, that He doesn't just come in and do it. We must allow Him, allow Him to break the fallow ground this morning and begin to touch the things that maybe we we don't want to be touched, but this morning we want God just to do something. I want to ask you this morning, would you ask God when it comes to sir, your servant heart, your stewardship, your sonship this morning. It's where you are this morning. Would you ask the Lord, Lord, come and break the fallow ground in my life this morning. Because you want to reign. I don't know about you, but I, I am looking forward to the Holy Spirit raining down on my life. I want that. I, I want more than what I have right now. I want God to do some amazing things things. God is about to in this next season, the Lord the Lord wants to rain down upon His church like never before, but it comes down to how our willingness this morning, in allowing the Holy Spirit to break the fallow ground in our lives this morning. So, would you take a couple of moments this morning and just, you and God, a God moment this morning. Would you respond to the Lord this morning? We stand together. If you're with me on this this morning, then join me this morning as we pray and just repeat after me. Say, Jesus, come and break the fallow ground in us this morning. Come on. Come, Holy Spirit. Break the fallow ground this morning. Break it in my heart this morning. Lord, come and break it this morning. Do a work that only you can do this morning, Lord. Lord, we want your reign. You prophesied in your word 
that in these last days we will experience the former and the latter rain. We don't want anything less, Lord. We want we want that full rain to fall on us, God. Break, break, Lord, break. Break, break what you need to break this morning, Father. Lord, break mindsets. I pray this morning that this system of this world that has crept into the church and has defined the standards by which we live, Father, shatter that this morning. Kick that out of your house today, God. Kick it out of your house today. Kick the world's standards out of the house this morning. Bring the kingdom's standard back into your house today, God. Bring bring the kingdom's standard back into the house today. Let us not live by the world's standard. But God, let us live by your kingdom's standard. Lord, we so much desired for you to do some great things. But so many times we, we're trying to get that by following a different rule, a different standard. And not the kingdom standard. I pray this morning, by the power of your spirit this morning, break and shatter the world's standard in the church, in Coastlands Community Church today, destroy the standard of the world this morning. Break it in the name of Jesus. And let the world standard be established, let the kingdom standard be established in this house. Let us live according to your, your, your standard, God. You call us to be servants. You call us to be stewards. You call us to be true sons and daughters of yours. I pray and ask you today, God, raise the bar. In a, by the power of your spirit, raise the bar in our lives today. I ask you in the name of Jesus. Whatever that is to us today, God. I pray for every single person seated here today or listening, listening today. Through, through live stream this morning, I ask you today, God, break the fallow ground. Break the fallow ground. Lord, sh- bring about a shift, I ask you, in the name of Jesus. Let us never be the same again, I ask you today, in the name of Jesus. Let, let today not just be another message. Let it, let, let it not be another, another message that w- was great to our ears this morning, but I ask you today, in the name of Jesus. Father, let, this, let your word shift. Let your word break. Let your word establish this morning. In our hearts, I pray that God, I ask you today that when we walk, when we walk, when we wake up tomorrow, when we walk back into this place in the future, let us be different people. I pray and ask you today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray this morning by revelation, by the revelation of the Spirit. Give each person their own revelation today of what it means to serve as, uh, in their capacity, what it means to be a steward in their capacity, what it means to be a son and daughter of God in their capacity. I pray and ask you today in the name of Jesus. But Father, I ask you, shift something in our hearts today. Shift something. You're about, God, you, did, you, you promise. You promised that we will experience the former and the latter rain. And Father, that's what we desire. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you take out your tithes and offering this morning? And let's give to the Lord.
just um, in uh, let's let, let's be very uh, careful and sensitive to this uh, because I don't want to do a takeaway. But uh, when I sat down now, is there anybody that has a word to confirm? And you may or not, but do you have a word to confirm what God was saying this morning? Just, uh, I, if, if there's nothing, I just, when I sat down, I felt like, uh, you may need to come back to me later, but if you, if you have something about confirmation, about, it's in saying, God, this is, this is a conf- confirming word this morning, if that's you this morning, just for the sake of our family, would you be... Uh, bold enough or just to share that quickly anybody I just had a sense and even maybe it's not this morning if God's placed something on your heart I don't want we need your gift we need your gift so if you need if you whether it's next week or letting me know please let me know but there's something that the Lord wants to uh, wanted to confirm here this morning and uh, so even if that's you on on screen this morning just I had such a strong sense that the Lord wanted to say something about this morning through another voice Father thank you this morning for the opportunity to give into your kingdom thank you that we don't live by the world standard but we live by the kingdom standard and this morning as we give to you we know that when we give into your kingdom, it's a kingdom that multiplies. It doesn't add, it multiplies. And so I pray this morning that you would multiply the finances, multiply the influence, multiply the impact. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Bless us as we go today. I pray, God, the word, let nothing steal it, let nothing affect it. Let us be different people. We ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome week. Have an awesome day. Um, Amen.